Jew and Gentile both, they're waking up. They're waking up. And so what's happening is they go to trim their lamps, but the fire won't start. The other fire has the Holy Spirit, and yet they all fell, apart, fell asleep. Why would God allow that? He didn't. Man did. So in the process of what God's doing, in the process of what God's doing, the five that didn't said to the five that did, give me of your oil. Did you catch that? Who's oil joy? The Holy Spirit. Eh? Give me of your Holy Spirit. No. Get your own. <laughs> Hello. I had a pastor tell me, or a pastor's son tell me, you have to submit the Holy Spirit in you and all your gifts to him. And I looked at him and I took and I says, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to submit myself the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit unto your father. He doesn't have that authority, nor does he have that power to do that. That's contrary to the scripture. In fact, the scripture says leaders are supposed to lift up the joy in his people, their faith. Because that's their joy. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is faith. And faith is the Holy Spirit. So the measure that you give to the Holy Spirit, the measure of faith, you can walk in. Hell, I, I, hell, I, I want to walk in the faith of the Son of God, Galatians 2.20. Not mine. I don't got enough faith to do what he wants me to do. I got to trust what he's doing. That's why Jesus should always go before us. That's why we need to hear, listen, and give place to his voice. Amen. Or obey. And I know people don't like that word. Obey. Obey. Leaders, start obeying and stop what you're doing. God's going to judge you very soon. He's got to come to leadership first. And he must do it in front of the people. He cannot do it in private. He must come to the people in front of them and make examples to bring the fear of the Lord back into the church and into the people and all who hears, which means the world. And believe me, the world's going to hear about it. Hallelujah. So in the meantime, they say, no, go get your oil. So they go, they leave. And here's the five that have the oil. The extra oil. They have the Holy Spirit and fire. They got the spirit and truth of God, and they listened, but they still fell up, fell asleep. But they're awake now, and here comes the whole, here comes the bridegroom. Here comes the head of the family, Jew and Gentile both, and here he comes, and the procession is with him, and that is the noise. All his procession comes with him. Because he's the king. He's the king of glory. He's enthroned and glorified forever and ever and ever. Period. He is sovereign and there's nothing you can do about it. You can try all you want to do, devil, but you cannot stop the Lord Jesus Christ because he's sovereign and you bow to him and he made sure you surrendered by putting his foot on your head by your neck. And I'm grateful. And no, you cannot touch me because I said that. In the name of Jesus. Well, what happened, in fact, yeah, in the name of the Lord of hosts, as you know him, the Son of God. The So, here he comes. They all go in. He shuts the door. So where did the other five go? Uh-huh. They come back to the door. But it's too late. Grace has ended. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We mean grace has ended. There is an end to all grace until you're eternally with him in heaven. After everything's done. After the books of judgments are open, after the book of, of, of the Lamb's book of life is open, after that, that's eternity. You're with him eternally. That is the final place. That is the final covenant. Eternal covenant. Yes, we have eternal covenant here while we're here. But that is the main covenant that seals everything. Now you cannot lose your salvation ever. You cannot, no more tears and all the other. That, hey, that is it. Amen. The Father's will is fulfilled. Amen. Okay? And so, that's why we want to pray for everybody. We don't want even our worst enemies to go to hell. 
It is a place to... Uh, no, we don't want anybody going there. Nobody. So this process, they all go in and he closes the door. Well, here comes the other five. Why didn't he open the door? Because they have no grace. I'm sorry, the first five had grace. The last five did not. No grace. I think that's pretty significant for today for a teaching, really. Amen. Just that point. So they come to the door and they knock on the door. Now this is in the present. It, this is in the future, but it's present. It's what's going to happen. Now he's talking in, in the future, but it's as though it's now. And he says to them, be gone from me. I know you not. That word know in the King James means present time. <laughs> but he's talking about what's going to happen. He's going to say to them, look, I don't know you. Isn't that funny? That kind of goes along with John 10, 27 to 30. Though. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and I shall give them. And they follow me and, I shall, and they shall not perish. And I shall give them eternal life and they shall not perish. For they are in my hand, and I shall pluck them out. And they are in my Father's hand, and they are able. For he's greater than I am, and we, and we are one. one. See? It's amazing how that puts in. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit can take the Word of God, rightly divide it, and put it together to prove what he's saying? And that's what he does. We need the Holy Spirit in the church. To rightly divide the word of God and speak spirit and truth by putting it together and making us excited about the word of God because he is exciting. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is called all their joy so we can have some fun. Look, uh, Jesus yeah. got down on the ground and wrestled with the children right? he played with them until they sang Hosanna. Why isn't the church singing Hosanna? Because there are too many adults in the church and they become childish. They know better than God does. I'm sorry, it's true. God have mercy on the adults of this world. I love having fun. People look at me funny sometimes, but you know what? That little boy and me and God, we have great times together. Hallelujah. Me and the Holy Spirit, we play. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. In that process, it verifies and confirms what's going to happen by what Jesus said when he was here in that day. I will say to you, I never knew you. Well, and yet they all did it in his name. Why did God give us teaching? Because that is exactly what's happening today. You know why he said that to them? And why he proved it? Because they used his name. It was not him using them. Now we have another example of this. Jesus being in control. You following Jesus. Him being in front of you, telling you what to do. Holy Spirit leading and guiding and teaching. But always to glorify Jesus, who is the King of glory, who wants us to go do what He wants. His will to be done. Okay? Is when Jesus first came and He was choosing the disciples, what happened? By the way, Jesus loves to fish. He's a great fisherman. Follow me. He told him to follow me. Yes. And I'll make you fisher of men. There you go. And that came out of the fact of what happened with the boats. They went out fishing all night long, right? Now these are professional fishers. And they know how to fish. But yet they caught nothing all night long. Why? Because Jesus was setting them up. Now think about that. He was setting them up. Right? And here's Matthew. He's the tax collector. Hello! He's going to tax all the fish that comes in. <laughs> huh? He's setting him up, too. Look, you think God doesn't set you up? Oh, my God, you better get right with God. <laughs> because he's setting you up. He's always looking out for us, and if he needs to set us up, praise God, let him. Because he's going to bring us into a new blessing. And pruning comes out of that. You know how I know? Because it's going to humble you. And when we get humble, we get pruned. And Amen. especially of the pride of what's known the pride of man, which is the pride of the heart. Okay? And it usually comes out of knowledge. 
So, <laughs> so here we are. These guys are coming back. They're tired. They've been fishing all night long. They're fruitless. So you know good and well they're not happy. Right? And here comes this guy. Go fishing again. If we've been out there all night long, come on, look at this realistically in a world that we understand today. Okay? And imagine these guys, professional fishers, and they got skunked. Literally. Which means they just spent all night out and it stinketh. I mean, come on, come on, come on. And realize what would you do when you were fruitless all night? You spent all night out there, you're tired, you're wore out. I mean, come on. You are disappointed, frustrated, and probably angry. And who are they blaming? God! You could have gave us at least one fish! <laughs> They're Jews! Come on! <laughs> and by the way, this was their business. Yeah. Which means their business is going under. Right? Yeah. So, he said, go out. You go out. Go out again. Let's go out again. He went with them this time. Let's go out. Come on, let's go out again. And then we get out. he said, throw your nets on the right side. And what happened? Don't look at the fish, which almost sank both boats. Look at the spiritual side of what just took place. We need to look at this at the church today. There are two churches. At the time Jesus did this, there was two covenants, because he's the new covenant. The old covenant was under Moses or the Father's law. Before grace came, before the blood of the Lamb. It's still in effect. These guys are under the law. And Jesus wants to show them what can happen with the new covenant that he's about to implement. Hmm. And he's going to make leaders out of them. What do you think is happening today? You were talking about the church, you know, and how is the Holy Spirit's moving. Okay? Same with other churches. They're, the churches are beginning to, to wake up. And we're about to find out who has the actual and who doesn't because those are the churches that God's going to choose. And believe me, he's choosing them. So, leaders, beware. The Holy Spirit's not moving to your church. You're in trouble. Brace <laughs> up before God like David did without excuse. He quickly added strong. So here's these two boats, which represent the two covenants. Today they represent two churches. The physical church, the spiritual church. The one that God is in control of that glorifies Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit and the one who's using God, the teachings of God, using the saying we got the Holy Spirit, one that won't let him move, they won't release the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that this church is walking perfectly in the Holy Spirit. And they're blessed. And the fire of God is moving, the love of God, the presence of God is overwhelming in some situations. And people are getting set free, they're being made whole. And this other church, oh my God, people are dying right and left, and they're sick all the time, and they're falling asleep during the sermons. Now, I've got to be careful on that, because God told me, you're going to preach sometimes, and it's going to seem like people are falling asleep. He said, but my son, understand something. They're not going to fall asleep. I'm going to put them in the Spirit, and I'm going to talk to them myself while you're preaching. While I'm speaking to you, I'm going to speak to them, but they're going to, they're going to be in this. I'm going to take them into the Spirit and bring them before me. Isn't that amazing? I love that. And it's happened. Hallelujah. it's happened. In fact, I've gotten reports back from people who have said what happened. And so, that's God. It's not me. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a person. I just give place to God to do what he wants. And I make sure he's in charge. If he's not in charge, I won't do it. Period. Leaders, you need to get that. That's an example for you right there. Amen. If God's not moving, why are you? Don't be Martha's. That's a spirit. It's a spirit of Jezebel. To get you busy so Beelzebub can accuse you and steal all the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and all the blessings of heaven. Because if you do away with the Holy Spirit, you lose the blessings of heaven. So here's these two books. And he tells them, throw the nets off to the right side. Why? Because if you look at Matthew 25, you also see the goats and the sheep. The goats are on the left hand side. You know why the sheep are on the right? Because Jesus sits on the right hand side of the Father whose will must be implemented. Right? Yeah. So Jesus is the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is given through the Son by the Father to the right hand side, which brings in 
the sheep, because Jesus is the good shepherd. Sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. So on the left hand side is the goats. See, it has nothing to do with the right. Also, by the way, the right hand is the sword of the spirit. The left hand is the shield of faith. So Jesus and the Father, they're connected. So in that, it flows. It's a river that flows out of the throne. Because Jesus sits in the Father's throne. Okay, Revelation 22. The river is flowing out of that throne to the right, not the left. The left is a place of damnation. Okay? And the Father is in control of that, not Jesus. Even though God gave everything into Jesus into his hand, that's the sheep. Okay? That's the Holy Spirit. And they're, they're, they're literally living in his blood. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's the blood covenant. We are in his hand. You are in the blood covenant of God. You have the full grace. You are a favorite. Amen. Because in Jesus, you have the favor of the Father. Okay? We're favorite. Okay? We're blood soaked. Hallelujah. That's what changes us. Okay? Until we come to a place like Paul says, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Now Christ is the Holy Spirit. He's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Father's Son has made the permanent abode with us. Permanent dwelling place. Okay? So in that process, the left is the goats. They're the ones that the Father will deal with because they have not received the Son. John 3 is all about this. If you reject the Son, the Father will reject you. Period. It's even worse than that. Go read it for yourself. If you reject the Son of God, you reject God and you will find your place in hell. It's sealed. You'll be sealed to it until you receive Jesus. So, here's these two churches. Now, God's ready to move. Now, does God have to move in the spiritual church or does he have to move in the other boat? Well, watch what's going to happen here. Okay? Jesus' heart is for the lost. The prodigals. And believe me, there are many prodigals. There's more prodigals in this world than there are people in the church. And that's a fact. I found that out when I moved around. It's surprising how many prodigals have been pushed out of the quote-unquote church. And most of them were so full of the Holy Spirit that they quenched and grieved the Holy Spirit and these people had walked away from the church. And many of them became lukewarm. But if you go read Jeremiah 3, Three times in there, God calls the backsliders back, and I will heal your backsliding. That is today. Because he said, I will give you pastors after my own heart, and you will do this no more. In other words, sacrifice no more. You'll do this no more. Because Jesus is the one and only final sacrifice for all of us. And that's what he's talking about. I will give you pastors after my own heart. Isn't that cool? Think about that. That's cool. And not just to the Jews, it's to the world. Yes. To the world, because we have that Jewish blood in us. Hallelujah! <laughs> See the promises we got? Now you understand the, the teaching about Abraham. We have the Abrahamic blessing. Why? Because we have that Jewish blood in us. Hallelujah! People yes. don't get it, what God did and why he did it. I love it. So anyhow, the two books, they bring it in. And here's Matthew. Oh, wow. Caesar's going to love me on this taxation. <laughs> Maybe I didn't realize God loves me more than Caesar does. <laughs> come on. And he gets up and Jesus talks to him and says, come follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. And what happened? He walked away from the from Caesar and the, uh, the, the soldiers because there was soldiers with him. He walked away. He, they could have killed him on the spot. No, they couldn't have. That's impossible. That's right. It's impossible. We can't die. Don't you understand? We cannot die unless God says so. Amen. The devil's come at me so many times, especially the sickness and the illnesses I've been through over the last eight years of, of what comes at me and trying to shut me up, and then it's not going to happen. I'm not going to stop walking to walk. I'm not going to stop talking to talk. I'm going to let Jesus Christ use me. I'm His temple, and they can't kill the temple until God says so. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Period. Hallelujah. And I've had to use that on the devil. In fact, he even came at the ministry of Warriors of Christ and says, I'm going to steal that from you and I'm going to use it to glorify myself and discredit Jesus. I said, oh no, you're not. That belongs to Jesus Christ, not me. And you can't touch it. 
He never came at me again after that. <laughs> you know how I knew that? Because before that happened, God was te- Jesus was teaching me all the scriptures about how they tried to touch him and, 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 and how it says, if they could not touch me because it was not yet my time, oh boy, that teaching was in me for when Satan came at me. And that teaching came out. And I knew it was God talking to Satan, not me. I knew it was God. And he knew it was Jesus. He knew. And he doesn't want to mess with him again. He knows what happened already. But he will mess with the people of God. Doesn't look better. Indirect, but yet we need to realize something, people. We need to realize that we are direct. And Jesus is in us right now. He's alive in us. And that is as direct as we're going to get until we're with him. Did you get that? Did you hear that? Satan knew that when he came at me. He knew that though I was speaking, there was the Lord in me speaking through me, and I had that position in Christ, and he couldn't touch it. He couldn't touch it. Amen. And to this day, he can't touch it. Because it belongs to God. And besides that, the warriors are holy warring angels, and he doesn't want to mess with them. He's been defeated enough times already. He's got to be discouraged in some form or other. <laughs> So, that's why they come in, they, now they come at everything in our life. So, we just, we, it's all God. And by the way, if you're having financial problems, one thing you need to do right now is declare them the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the king, right? We're in his kingdom. Amen. The king takes care of the kingdom, right? Amen. So, are they your bills or are they his? Amen. Is your money yours or his? Yes. Do you understand? It's everything in your life. The house. Is it yours or his? Then declare his house. If somebody's pondering something, say, Lord, speak to him in their sleep. (laughs) Your will be done. If you want this, speak to him in If you want this to be your house, speak to them in their sleep. Give them the decision what to do. He won't make them do it, but he'll give them the suggestion. He will speak to them and give them the option of what they want to do. Amen. So we have to understand that what everything has taken place is to now. That's why he was. That's history. Right? What the effects and influences of history doesn't it affect us today? Makes us what we are. Right? So if Jesus was and is, oh, he is. So what took place there is is taking place today in us, right now. Kingdom of heaven is within us. The throne of God and the Father is here. We can join them in us. Did you hear that? It changes your whole world when you look at it that way. Now the devil has to listen. Why? Because it's not you. No longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. It's the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking. Because Christ literally means Lord is the Father. Christ, or Jesus, is the Son, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Christ is the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Lord to allow us to become the anointed of the Lord. That's what Christ means. It's the Holy Spirit and fire. That's why the Father, Son, the Father released the Holy Spirit through the Son, the breath of God. He breathed on us and received the Holy Spirit. Why would he do that? Because he just changed the water in you to wine. Hello? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Now you've got seven fires burning in you. There's seven that were turned into wine. Wine represents the Holy Spirit by the blood of the Lamb released. Amen kingship, enthronement in heavenly places. Well, the heavenly places is also within us. So imagine what God has given you. In fact, in Ephesians 1, verses 2 and 3, the Father says it very clearly. It says the Father grants us all the, but He gives us all the blessings, spiritual, not just like all the spiritual blessings of heaven. How much is all? Oh. Do you understand? It's way beyond us. It's like the word great. How big is great to God compared to how we see great? Huh? Well, we got to look at the, all the spiritual blessings in heaven the same way. They're in us. 
Why aren't we using them? This is what's going to change. In the end, in John, after Jesus died, was buried, three days later, he resurrected, and he ascended. Then he came back and gave the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. You remember the boat? Okay. Peter, who represents the church, by the way, got bored waiting on God. I'm sorry, it's true. God laid it out to me. He got bored waiting on God in the upper room. Okay? So, because Jesus said, remain here until you're endued from high with power. Well, they got, Peter got bored. He wanted to go fishing. So one thing he knew. So he, he reverted back to his vomit. Not to fishing. Mammon. Self. Because he got bored waiting for God. You would be surprised how many Satanists today are ex-Christians because they got tired of waiting for God. And Satan offered them everything they were looking for. I'm serious. I've talked to many of them. And that's kind of what happened here. Without, But they didn't turn to Satan. They just turned back to man, which in a form is turning away from God. But at the same time, they didn't know any better. Praise God for grace. So what happened was, he took eight with him. Now what surprised me in the story is John, who, had, who heard, he had his ear on the heart of God. He listened to the heartbeat of God, the Father and the Son both. That's why he's called the beloved apostle. That apostle, or that, 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 that disciple. Because he had his ear on the bosom of Jesus. He was listening to what, everything, the heartbeat of God coming and going. The conversation between the Father and the Son. Ooh, that's the blessing of coming and going. The Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said, what I do only what I see my Father do. And I only speak those things I hear and say. That's the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. That goes on today within us. I believe Jacob's ladder had a lot to do with that too. Father and the Son. Father and the Son. Ascending and descending. And the Holy Spirit and fire. There's a lot of things involved with a lot of things that we don't realize that's involved there. But everything is faceted. You don't look at just one thing and say, that's it. No. You look at something and say, oh, that's faceted. Here's a possibility. Here's a possibility. Look at this and this and this. That's why you go, the Holy Spirit's got to write you to buy the Word of God and put it together for it. Stop trying to figure out God and intellectualizing, intellectualizing Him and analyzing everything. Stop it. That's the mind. And that's an enemy to God. Because now God can't give you the mysteries and revelations of His knowledge through His Son. Even the mystery of Christ Himself. Which is Ephesians 5. So when we take place and we look at this book, and here's this boat that goes out at night again. If you find it interesting, night. Both of them went out and spent all night. They were in darkness. Because the Holy Spirit did not lead them. They were not told to go. They were not led to go. They were driven to go by imitation of the demonic. Okay? So, in the process of this, they, they reverted back. And they said, yes, I believe that John was sent with them because he heard the heartbeat of God, even though he was out there, so that when Jesus appeared, he would know who he was. And he was the only one that saw him for who he was. You know? And so, and the same thing with Paul. I believe John could see the glory of Jesus. Okay? I believe that with all my heart. Just like Paul. He was blinded by the glory of God, not the light. Did you catch that? Catch that? It's true. That's why everybody heard the voice. Everybody, it says, go read it, all the accounts of it. There's three accounts of this. Everybody heard the voice. Everybody saw the light. But only Paul was blinded by the glory. Otherwise, they all would have been blinded. Paul was the only one that was blind. He only, he's the only one that got to see the glory of God. And I believe John was that way. I believe John could see the glory of Jesus. And I believe John went with them to make sure that Jesus was revealed to the rest, especially to Peter or the church. Remember, this is today. They went fishing, and again, they were unfruitful. And here's this guy standing on the beach, and he's got a fire going on the sand, which means people, the world, okay? 
Jesus is preparing a communion of omega-3 oil, which is the oil that's in fish, omega-3. Catch that? Mm -hmm. Omega Godhead. Okay, in the end. Okay, so there's one bolt now. By the way, there's only one covenant because Jesus is glorified. Okay, that's why there's not two bolts. There's only one. There's only one covenant now. There's only one way to heaven. That's Jesus Christ. That is the blood covenant. Not grace, the blood covenant. Five is not grace. Five is the number of the blood covenant. Which gives you grace. See how they do away with things. <laughs> and so, in that process, this guy says, he's on he says, throw your throw your net on the right side. They all heard him, but only John recognized him. He said, Peter, ask the Lord. And then Peter realized he was naked. Okay. Why was he naked? Because he was out there with no authority and he took eight others with him. I believe John was the only one that was used by God to reveal what was happening. So many people, so many churches want to go out and be fruitful, but God is not leading them. If they're not right with God, God's not going to lead you to go out and do his work the way he wants to because you'll take his glory. And something we all need to be very aware of too, you cannot say, I saved so-and-so. It needs to stop. Because you're taking the glory of God. Right. And the devil loves it. But now they can accuse you of being prideful, of being God. We can't save anybody. Amen. Okay? we got to change the way we say it. Oh, you should have seen what Jesus did today. He touched this guy and boom! He received him on the spot. And I got to witness all this. See the difference? That's it. <laughs> we need to get excited in what God's doing and saying, taking His glory. We need to get excited in what Jesus is doing through us. And not take His glory at all. So here's this boat. So Peter realizes he's naked. He's out there. He was not led. He was not sent. He, nothing. He just, he was bored. He turned back to his vomit and took others with him. And so they all stink it. But I still believe John was sent. To reveal Jesus in the spirit. So when Peter did it, he threw on a coat and boy, into the water he went. And he swam to Jesus because he knew immediately, like David, when he heard what he did, boom, he was throwing himself before God immediately. So they dared drag, they tried to drag the fish in and they couldn't. There's 153 fish in his net. And what happened? Well, finally, after all these years, we went to Israel, God sent us to Israel. Paid our way and everything, and gave it like a honeymoon for us. And the the guide of the, the tour that we were with, Messianic Jew, powerful, had such great wisdom and revelation. Oh my gosh. But he talked about that. And he said the 153 fish represent 150 represented in Hebrew, I am God. Mm -hmm. And see. The yokes and burdens of God are light and easy, but when you get down to the glory of God, when you say, when, you, when you hear, I am God, Jesus is telling them in that book, I am God. Without me, you are fruitless. If I haven't sent you, who, who, why are you out there? If I haven't told you to pray, why do you pray? This stuff is real. Okay? So, we got to recognize that, as it says in the scriptures, apart from, he, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Huh. I've heard it preached all over. Apart from me, you are nothing. That's a lie. Apart from him, you can do nothing. Because he, he always has to precede you. He always has to precede you. That's how you know for sure he's in front of you and you have not put him behind you. It's him, not you. That's when you're blessed. That's when you're fruitful. Because it's all about him and not you. Now Jesus is using you because he's preceded you. He is the one who has moved you. You have not tried to move him, which is what Peter did. And so in that process, that's what the church has done as a whole. That's why they're apostate as a whole. But God is starting to wake up individuals, churches, and individual people. And this is what this process is about right now. He is preceding what he is doing with us. He is way out in front of us, and yet he is with us as he's doing it. 
and he's leading the way, he's preparing the way, he's setting the way, all for his glory, because that's the Father's will that the Son get glorified. And nothing to do with pride, devil. And it, it just, it's amazing what people say, well, isn't that awful prideful? Well, God isn't prideful, he cannot sin. And yet he's proud of us. Interesting, isn't it? He's, having, he's actually heard, I've heard him say that. And, and so, because he is, as, as people, when our children do something that's good, you know, or obeys us, aren't we proud of them? It's not a pride that's bad. It, it's a love. Wow, you did great. And we got to look at it that way. We got to start realizing that the love of God says, Hey, I'm so proud of you. You did great. And it's, it's just another way of expressing love and building up, raising up, lifting up. And that's what Jesus is about. That's what the Holy Spirit is about. The Holy Spirit was given as another comforter to lift us up to Jesus Christ, who lifts us up to the Father. That's the process. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, us. Us, Holy Spirit, Son, Father. That's how it works. And that's the number eight, by the way, which is again, restoration, reconciliation, renewing, restoring, rejuvenation, regeneration of the Holy Spirit. So this is the process that we're in, that God loves us so much, he's going to put the truth out there. Whether you like it or not, it's true. You can hear God. You can hear God. But God will prove it to you. If you don't think so, challenge him. He does not get offended for anyone who's seeking him and challenges him to help them to believe. Belief is from the Father to believe in the Son. Faith is the Holy Spirit who reveals the Son. Trust is the Son. And you can only get that through the Son. He will teach you how to trust Him and lift you up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now, Lord God, that anybody and everybody who hears us, not only can we hear it and receive it, listen and hear your voice, but they will pass it on. Even if they preach it themselves, I don't care. It's your word, Lord. You use it as you please. But I pray, Father, that you grant them the ability in the name of Jesus by the empowerment of your Holy Spirit until they come to Jesus in the fullness of your will to be done eternally and get filled with the Holy Spirit and sealed eternity also. That it will be released to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. He is the King of glory, Lord. Now, I'm thankful, Lord, for what you're doing. And I bless you, Lord, in that. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to take even a greater place in your people. Because we all need more of you, Lord. Yes. Less of us, more yes. of you. As your word says. Yes. We must decrease, but you must increase. <coughs> increase, Lord, and push us out of the way. I give you that place, and I pray to God everybody else does too. Give you permission. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us another comforter who leads us, guides us, teaches us, cleans up our messes, shows us the truth, speaks to us in truth. He doesn't condemn, but he lifts us up to that truth that we can repent. And that we can come to you in the fullness of knowing that you love us so much that you receive that repentance and you wash it away with the blood of your Son. Father, we cry out to you now in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Your will be done, Lord God. Glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in every aspect of our lives. And I pray for the lost, Lord, that you bring in and save as many as you can eternally, Lord. Amen. Your will be done. Fill up the book of the Lamb. And it's not even begun to be full. Fill it up, Lord God, in Jesus' name and for his glory. Have your way, Lord Jesus, King of glory forever and ever, sovereign, enthroned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. And we bless you. In the name of Jesus. Traveling mercies for everybody, Lord. 
And I pray over these words, Lord God, yes, and all yes. the words from all those speaking by your Holy Spirit, from the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray over every word, Lord God, that they be fruitful to your glory, Lord Jesus. Father, your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.